everyone, welcome and welcome back to my studio. Today we're actually going to talk about the photography part of the process. And to see what type of photos work best for image transfer. We're going to see how to choose the photos we're going to use. And also how to take the photos. <laughs> We're going to talk about using travel or local photos. And we're going to see how to transfer family photos. I have a lot of info to share with you today, so I'm going to break it down to different topics so it's easy and clear. So thank you so much for joining me today and let's start now! I feel like not a lot of people are using photography in their mixed media projects. For me it's mostly about the photography so I always look for different ways and interesting ways to present my photos. And image transfer always yields very interesting and unpredictable results. So that's why I do image transfer. Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> How important are the photos for you in your uh, mixed media project? The choosing the right photos for this process is a very important part of it. It will make the whole process of image transfer much easier for you to do. Here is an example of a photo that will work great for image transfer. Let's take a look inside this book. Uh, it's a book I put together a few years ago to display some of my photos. And it can help us figure out what to look for when choosing photos for image transfer. So basically what we want are images with nice contrast and a lot of light areas. Photos here are nice, but probably won't work for our purpose. This one, however, where you have a strong dark and light areas will do just fine. And same goes for this photo, which has a lot of light areas. And as you can see, these photos are more flat and don't have strong highlights and shadow areas. However, saying that these type of photos might not work great with gel plate transfer, but they can work just fine with other type of transfers. And speaking of which, I have a book, a great book, which has tons of different image transfer processes and other fun photo and mixed media methods. There's so much stuff there. You're going to love it. Just check out the book. Uh, the mixed media photography book, it's on Amazon. So the reason this photo works uh, well for image transfer is that it has a nice range of tones with dark shadows and bright highlights. But it still maintained a lot of details that make the photo interesting uh, to look at. So now let's see how well it really works for gel plate uh, image transfer. And if you want to learn to gel print photos like I do, uh, don't hesitate, check out uh, my uh, online classes. You're going to learn how to make beautiful monoprints from your own photos.
Yeah, so make sure to check out my fun and ongoing online classes. Okay, so now before I show you how to transfer family or portrait photos, let's see how to take and select your travel or local photos. The following footage is from another video. So a couple of days ago I had to be in Hollywood and I decided to check out and photograph the Cinerama Dome which is sadly another casualty of the pandemic. I think I really like this one. And now it's time to print it out. Okay, so I'm going to transfer this photo into my test journal. I usually like my test journals to be sketchbooks uh, because it's so easy to remove a page when I uh, mess up. When it comes to family photos, you can use those vintage photos uh, or your childhood photos. No problem. You will need to scan or even photograph them so you can adjust them on your PC. And you can of course use digital photos you took with your phone. Make sure to use photos that are clear without too much distracting uh, background. And here is an art piece I made using part of this photo. And now let's see how I used my dad's old photo to gel print this monoprint. Another thing I'm quite passionate about recently are my beautiful succulents. This is pretty much the result of the stay-at-home orders of 2020. And since I have so many of them now, I had an idea to get organized and make a succulent journal with photos and information about each one. 
So obviously I had to find a good way to photograph them so I have a, a good quality images to transfer. And yes, I could have photographed them against the white wall, but then I had an idea to get a tabletop uh, light box. It was so much easier to get good clean photos this way. I printed out one of the photos with my laser printer and transferred onto my plant journal. So I tend to use a lot of uh, vintage uh, cameras like this one. I don't just collect the uh, cameras. I, I use them and enjoy them. That's what they're for. I really enjoy the, the whole process of using uh, vintage film cameras. <laughs> We're going to see what images work. We're, we're going to see what best. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, it just doesn't work this way. I feel like every time I start talking, there's so much noise from outside. We're going to see what type of photos are better to use for image transfer. Thank you for watching. See you next time.